All right, so for this one, we have two cables, cable A, B, and C, D, and the cables each have diameters of one centimeter, and those cables are composed of 18-8 cold rolled stainless steel. They suspend a structural steel T-beam, which is a WT-102 by 13, and they are suspended from rigid supports in the ceiling. If the only thing we're looking at is the self-weight of the beam, uh, then the overall downward deflection of point G including the deformation of cables A, B, and C, D, is closest to, right? So there's two halves we've got to figure out, right? The two ends of the beam drop by a certain amount because the cables stretch a little bit. And how do we calculate how much those cables will stretch? Okay, you might remember the formula that axial deformation, which is what would apply here because it's just stretching those cables along their axes, it'll deflect a flea, right? Okay, so that means we need to know F, right? But L, I think, is just given directly. E and A are things that, you know, E is something we're going to have to look up out of a table. And then how do we deal with A? Okay. A is going to be for the cross-sectional area. Um, now, I'll go ahead and say here that uh, we're, oh, it, it actually says in the notes down here, we are going to neglect the self-weight of the cables. Those are going to be pretty light relative to the weight of the beam. So we're going to neglect the self-weight of the cables. If you didn't do that, you would actually have to do uh, kind of an integral form of this FL over EA in order to deal with the fact that you have more and more and more force as you move down the length because the weight would add up basically as you went down the length. But it says we can neglect that, which makes our job a little bit easier. Okay. Um, how do I figure out, if we're going to go ahead and do this part of it, how do I figure out F? Okay. Let's go and look up this WT-102 by 13. So let's see at the bottom here, it says WT means structural T-section followed by the nominal depth in millimeters, then the mass in kilograms per meter of length, right? So we know for this uh, beam right here that the, the mass of that beam is going to be equal to 2 times E times what? So 2 times 2.2 meters times... 13 kilograms per meter times 9.81 meter per second squared. And this W that I just found right here is not a uh, force per unit of length anymore because I multiplied it by the total length. 2 times 2.2 uh, meters is what gives me that total length. Okay? So... Let me actually calculate this real quick. 2 times 2.2 times 13 times 9.81 will give me 561.132. And this is going to be in newtons, right? Now, this is a little bit tricky. How much of that weight is felt in each cable? Half. So I basically divide that by 2 again, and that's what I use for the F in this equation, right? I'm going to take 561.132 newtons over 2. Length is going to be what? Okay. The length of the cable right, is going to be equal to 1.1 meters. Okay, this is an 18.8 cold rolled stainless steel. That means I have to go up here and find for that material, what can I expect the modulus of elasticity to be? So here's an 18.8 cold rolled, and it says right here, 190 GPA. Okay, so I'll go back in here and plug in a 190 times 10 to the ninth newtons per square meter. Okay. Now what about the area? Okay. 
okay? So pi times, we have that D there of one centimeter, okay? And I'm going to tell you what, let me get that into meters real quick, okay? So I'm going to divide by 100 centimeters in one meter, like this. We'll take all of that and square it. And then we'll divide by 4 because our air formula for area is pi uh, d squared over 4. Okay? So let me go ahead and I'll, I'll go ahead and get this answer real quick. Okay? Um, so we'll take 561.132 uh, uh, divided by 2 times 1.1 1 .1 over 190 times 10 to the ninth uh, times pi times, okay, 1 over 100. This will be squared, and we'll divide that by 4. Okay, this gives me 2.068 times 10 to the minus 5. What are my units? Is it unitless? No, it's going to be meters, right? We can actually chase that through if we want, because basically this is going to be meters squared that cancels out the meters squared here, right? So that we end up with no meters there. The newtons are going to cancel the newtons. We're just left with the one meters that's left over up there in the numerator. So this will be meters, okay? And because I might want to use that a little bit later, I'm going to store that into variable A. All right, so that takes care of how far the entire beam drops because of stretch of the cables. Now what we want to do is add to that the effect that this beam is going to, you know, sag in the middle because it's got its own self-weight. Right? So how do I deal with that? I go shopping, right? I go shopping in my uh, beam deflection table. Okay? I go back to my uh, distributed force, right? For a simply supported beam, which is what it happens if you hang it from cables like this. And what I'm going to do is figure out what this maximum deflection is here at the middle. 5WL to the fourth, okay, over 384EI. Five WL to the fourth over 384EI. Did I remember that correctly? Okay. What do I need to plug in here? What's W? Okay. W is not exactly what I did up here because the W I need is the weight per unit length. Right? It would basically be this chunk right here. Okay. So I'm going to put that in there as 13 kilograms per meter times 9.81 meter per second squared. That uh, set of, of variables right there gives me W. What do I put in for L? Okay, L is the entire length of this whole beam, right, which is going to be 2.2 .2 meters times 2. And I'll divide this by 384. Okay, what's E? Okay, careful here. So, yeah, we have a different kind of material. This, this uh, beam is not made out of that stainless steel. The beam is made out of structural steel, which means we probably need to go back into our reference material if we don't remember what this is off the top of our head. Structural steel is 200 GPA for its modulus of elasticity. <coughs> 200 times 10 to the ninth 
Newton per square meter. And what's I? Back to the reference material again. We've got to go back and find these T's, if I can. Okay, here they are. And I need a W T 102 by 13. Unfortunately, this is on its side, but I'll, I'll deal with it. Okay, I is right here. Is that the 1.42? Yeah, 1.42 times 10 to the 6th millimeters to the 4th. And what should I do with those units? Okay. So I should probably take those and multiply by something that gets rid of the millimeters and puts in meters instead. What do I need to multiply or what do I need to raise this to? Yep. Raise it to the fourth. Okay. So let me put all this in there. Five times 13, times 9.81, times 4.4, okay. All this divided by 384, times 200, times 10 to the ninth, times 1.42, times 10 to the sixth. Uh, 1.42 times 10 to the 6th millimeters to the 4th. No, oh, yeah, yeah. Hang on. L to the 4th. That's supposed to be raised to a power. Thanks for catching that. I didn't write it up here. That's why I didn't get it in my calculator. Thank you. All right, so I need to put this up here, raised to the 4th. You have a question? Correct. So it says at x be L over two. At x equal L over two? Yeah. Right. So that's saying look at the picture that's there in the reference material. So the question was um, where does this maximum deflection occur for a simply supported beam with a distributed load? Right? Mm -hmm. The L that they're talking about here is the entire length of that beam. And they're saying with this here that says at x equal L over 2, they're saying this deflection happens halfway across the entire length of the beam. But for all of these, um, for all of these examples here, um, even though they didn't maybe do a great job of labeling it, for all these examples, the length of the beam is L, the whole length of the beam. So we did use the correct thing for our L because so we're using the whole length of our beam. Yeah, so I think your point is we basically, uh, the X that they're talking about would be halfway across this beam, which would be like our 2.2. We multiplied by that, that by 2 to get L. But either way, the concept of L is the length of the beam, and that's kind of what I used mentally to come up with 4.4 for the length of the beam. Okay. Let me get back into my calculation here. Um, Take this and multiply it by uh, 1 over 1,000, and I'll raise this to the fourth. Okay, so this gives me 2.1915, okay, times 10 to the minus third meters. Okay? So my total delta, okay, this is delta due to the cable, and this is delta due to the sag of the beam, so my total is just the sum of the two.
okay, which I actually had the first result stored into variable A. Okay, so I'll take the answer and add what I had in A. And that gives me my total, 2.212. I get that right? 2.212 times 10 to the minus third meters. Now it's telling me this in millimeters, right? What's the conversion? Okay. My 10 to the minus third is a thousandth, right? Which is, which is a millimeter. So if I take just the number by itself, that would be the number in, of millimeters. And that's what's given right here. And the reason it's negative, in case anyone's wondering about that, is because it's all dropping. I just, I didn't take care, I didn't kind of think about the fact that it's going down versus up with my signs. I just sort of took downward as positive, which is why I came up with a positive number. But you can see why it would be negative if you're thinking of dropping as being a negative number there. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, so the question is, would we think of a, of a situation where maybe someone would do this problem and totally ignore the cables and end up with a number that was close enough or they would still get the right answer? Yeah. That, that could happen, right? What does that tell us? Those cables are not contributing much. And there's a lot of cases where you've seen me work a problem in here where I tell you, let's neglect this effect. Let's neglect that effect, right? It's doing things like that a number of times in your life where you start realizing sometimes these effects have so little, little uh, contribution that I can sometimes safely ignore them and it won't really make much of a difference at the end of the day, right? So, um, you know, it makes enough of a difference to where, let's say, you didn't consider the stretch of the cable, it might make enough of a difference to where it started making you uncomfortable because you didn't have the right answer out to all of the decimal places that are given in the answer choices, right? But you might still be able to get the right answer. So anyway, but it's a, it's a fair point, right? Okay, we good on that problem?